I resolved to fly far from the scene of my misfortunes. At length, the thought of you crossed my mind, and I decided to proceed towards your native town of Geneva. My travels were long, and the sufferings I endured intense. The nearer I approached to your habitation, the more deeply did I feel the spirit of revenge enkindled in my heart. No, not revenge. Rather base and vile murder. Do not deny that it was you who so callously strangled William in the forest. Yes, the first to pay for your sins was your brother. As I then left his corpse, I came upon a barn wherein sleeping on some straw, I found a lovely young woman. I bent over her and placed the portrait securely in one of the folds of her dress so that she might share in the punishment. Sweet Justine! For some days I haunted the spot where these scenes had taken place, alone and miserable. I have been shunned by all mankind, abandoned even by the one whom I call Father. You must therefore atone for your sins by creating me a female companion. Shall I create another like yourself, whose joint wickedness might desolate the world? You may torture me, but I will never consent. I am malicious because I am miserable. What I ask of you is reasonable and moderate. I demand a creature of another sex, but as hideous as myself. This small gratification shall content me. If you consent, neither you nor any other human being shall ever see us again. I will go to the vast wilds of South America. I shuddered when I thought of the possible consequences of my consent, but I felt that there was some justice in his argument. You swear to be harmless, but have you not already shown a degree of malice that should reasonably make me distrust you? My vices are the children of a forced solitude that I abhor, and my virtues will necessarily arise when I live in communion with an equal. I consent to your demand, on your solemn oath to quit every place in the neighborhood of man as soon as I deliver to you a female who will accompany you into exile. I swear by the sun, and by the blue sky of heaven, and by the fire of love that burns my heart that if you grant my prayer, while they exist, you shall never behold me again. Depart to your home and commence your labors. I shall watch their progress with unutterable anxiety. When you are ready, I shall appear. Fearful, perhaps, of any change in my sentiment, he suddenly quitted me and descended the mountain with greater speed than the flight of an eagle. I too began my descent towards the valley, but my heart was heavy and my steps slow. Disgusted with the task before me, I gave way to my own miserable reflections. I, the only unquiet thing that wandered restless in a scene so beautiful and heavenly, was tempted to plunge into the silent lake, that the waters might close over me in my calamities forever. But I was restrained when I thought of Elizabeth, whom I tenderly loved, and whose existence was bound up in mine. You well know, Victor, that our union has been the favorite plan of our parents ever since our infancy. I confess to you, my friend, that I love you and that in my airy dreams of futurity, you have been my constant friend and companion. Elizabeth. But it is your happiness I desire when I declare to you that our marriage would render me eternally miserable unless it were the dictate of your own free choice. You have traveled. You have spent several years of your life at Ingolstadt. Answer me, dearest Victor, with simple truth. Do you not love another? My beloved girl, the little happiness that remains for me is centered in you. Chase away your idle fears. To you alone do I consecrate my life. However, I harbor one dreadful secret, which, when revealed to you, will chill your frame with horror. I will confide this tale of misery and terror to you the day after our marriage, but until then, I beg you, do not mention or allude to it. I will do as you ask. Seeking to distance myself from those loved ones whom I imperiled with my mere presence, I fled to one of the smallest of Scotland's Orkney Islands. On the whole island there were but three miserable huts. One of these was vacant. This I took possession of and furnished according to my needs. 
and so I lived ungazed at and unmolested. As I commenced my labors, a train of reflection occurred to me which led me to consider the effects of what I was now doing. I was about to form another being of whose dispositions I was alike ignorant. She might delight in murder and wretchedness. He had sworn to quit the neighborhood of man and hide himself in the deserts, but she had not. Even if they were to leave Europe, one of the first results of these sympathies for which the demon thirsted would be children, and a race of devils would be propagated upon the earth who might make the very existence of the species of man a condition precarious and full of terror. Had I the right, for my own benefit, to inflict this curse upon everlasting generations? your promise and destroy my hopes. Be gone! I do break my promise. Never will I create another like yourself, equal in deformity and wickedness. You believe yourself miserable, but I can make you so wretched that the light of day will be hateful to you. I am firm, and your words will only exasperate my rage. It is well. I go. But remember, I shall be with you on your wedding night. <laughs> the remains of the half-finished creature, whom I had destroyed, lay scattered on the floor, and, and I almost felt as if I had mangled the living flesh of a human being. I reflected that I ought not to leave the relics of my work and excite the horror and suspicion of the peasants, and I accordingly put them into a basket, with great quantity of stones, and laying them up, decided to throw them into the sea. Great God. If for one instant I suspected the hellish intention of my fiendish adversary, I would rather have wandered a friendless outcast over the earth than have consented to this miserable marriage. But, as if possessed of magic powers, the monster had blinded me to his real intentions. And when I thought that I had prepared only for my own death, I hastened that of a far dearer victim. Thank <laughs> you.